All right, we're here to talk about carabiners. We're going to be starting with the history of carabiners by the oldest design. This style is called an oval. It's because of the shape. It's a simple oval shape. This is the original carabiner design. It has a solid gate on it. It has a notched nose. This carabiner is a great carabiner um, and it's really strong and the design is a little heavy because it is the original design. It's great for racking equipment on. It's great because when loaded, it actually allows a little bit of movement on a piece, which is kind of nice on routes. Um, the downfall to the oval is when weighted, I'm actually weighting the whole entire oval instead of just one direct spine. So that means the gate's getting a lot of pressure on it. The oval is an excellent carabiner though to be used in a top rope setup um, because of the shape, but this one is aluminum. And if I use an aluminum oval in a top rope setting, the rope actually starts to notch into the metal and causes this carabiner to wear over time. The ovals that I would be suggesting to use for that top rope scenario is going to be your stainless steel, not your aluminum. Two stainless steel ovals, opposite opposed, works great in a top rope situation, but realistically, I would actually add that third oval, creating a larger platform for the rope to run across, means that that rope isn't making such a sharp bend. The rope is going to be a lot less rope drag by running it through three carabiners instead of two. So in that top rope scenario, setting up a good bomber top rope, three ovals is gonna work excellent. They nest together nicely because of their shape. And with the stainless steel, these are gonna last much longer than your regular aluminum. Also, the benefit of stainless steel is it keeps your ropes much cleaner. You're not gonna get that black gunk on your hands after doing a bunch of pitches of belaying. So the original carabiner is your oval shape. And from there, they came up with an innovative idea and they changed the actual shape of the carabiner from there. This is your standard D shape. This is also an older style of carabiner. Um, with the standard D, the idea was we can lighten the carabiner quite a bit with the shape. Before with the oval, when we had load it, we were getting about 50% of the strength on the gate and 50% of the strength on this back spine. With the D shape, what happened is it actually wants to keep that rope and we're gonna get more than 50% of the weight running down that spine, which is the strong part of the carabiner. So the D was kind of a newer idea to the oval. Still in use today, still a great carabiner, just like the oval, we're still seeing them and using them. After the D, they came up with something a little bit different, your modified D. It has a wider opening here, which makes it much smoother for clipping. That's what the big gate opening is for, for the ease of clipping. The other thing that you're gonna notice the difference between this one and this one might be that the metal itself, not the color, but the shape starts to change. This is an I-beam. You can see that the metal's been notched out in here and it's shaped different where this looks just like a bar and it's actually called bar stock. So this process is where we're getting our lighter carabiners where they hot forge and give us this I-beam design. Also with this carabiner, one of the big differences you're gonna notice is all of a sudden I don't have the notch in the nose. That notch has been removed. This is called a key lock carabiner. And so when I shut the gate, it shuts just like any other carabiner, except I don't have a notch for uh, wires to hang up or even you know, a hanger as I'm back cleaning a route or an aid. That design is really nice and that's more of a modern touch to the shape. After that, we came in and we got to the, this style carabiner. Now, the big difference with this one is all of a sudden the gate is completely different. The gate is no longer a solid chunk of metal. It is now a thin wire. The, actually, with doing the thin wire, it's making the carabiner quite a bit stronger, which doesn't seem like it would, but it does. And the reason is they realized by putting the wire on here, we we're getting a lighter carabiner A, and B, it was solving this problem called gate flutter. And gate flutter means that if the gate slightly opens, the carabiner actually is weaker. The way you can always check gate flutter is you grab the carabiner, you put your palm out, take the carabiner, and give it a good whack. It just makes a sound of thud. It just is the sound of it hitting my skin. Where if I did that with one of the solid gate carabiners, and I give it a good whack, you're actually gonna hear a sound like a clip you can hear the metal making a clip sound. That means that the gate 
is slightly opening every time it is hit on my hand. Now, in a fall, if the carabiner taps the rock, it could cause the gate flutter. So the idea of the wire gate was creating a gate with higher tension so it doesn't want to do the gate flutter. Great invention. This was a little bit newer than the solid gate. There are variations within the wire gate with this, this key lock. There's a modified and then there's not. This is a different variation where it has a big ball on here and it's just that same idea. You're not gonna get your gear hung up in that nose, that notch. There are variations also within solid gates and wire gates. We've got straight gates and bent gates. The straight gate is designed to go into the hardware directly where the bent gate is designed for the rope, for the ease of clipping. That's what the bend is there for. So the rope will nest and drop in. It makes it easier to clip the rope, makes it faster and just nicer in your hand. You can get bent gates and straight gates in almost every carabiner on the market. These two, the big difference is that there is a nice silvery color plate that is located at the base of this carabiner where the rope is going to specifically rub on this carabiner. This one, you're gonna notice that the stainless steel piece is actually up at the top of this one. This design was brilliant because for sport climbing where you're clipping into actual hangers all the time, what happens is your carabiners, the soft aluminum gets gouged and creates really sharp chunks of metal in this section where the stainless steel is, which makes it very dangerous if you accidentally flipped that carabiner and use it on a rope. The rope could actually be damaged and catastrophically fell from sharp edges of metal. So this design is one for the rope to rub, the other one is for the actual hanger so it doesn't gouge the carabiner. From there we'd move on to our classic locking carabiner systems. And since we started with the oldest, um, with the carabiners, the standard non-lockers, we're going to be doing that here with our locking carabiners. This here is your standard oval locker. The original locking carabiners were pretty simple. We had that same exact oval shape and the difference with a non-locker and a locker is simply that we can lock this gate in that shut position. The original lockers were simple where you just twisted the gate until it became in the locked position and untwist it to open it. It was a great design. It was fast to use. You could quickly twist it, make sure it's locked and move on. This specific one I'm holding is that stainless steel design. Instead of the aluminum, it would be great for if you wanted to use those lockers in your top rope setup. This would be an ideal beaner. The downfall with a screw gate locking carabiner though, is that I can over tighten this where I will not be able to untighten the carabiner and it will be stuck attached to me, attached to a rope, attached to a rock. So by over tightening, it actually can get stuck where you have to use a pair of pliers or some kind of force to pull it apart. Also, if this was sitting on the rock and you have it orientated where it wants to rub against the rock, I actually can be tightening the gate every time the rope swings a little bit, creating it where I won't be able to unclip this from the top of the route. So the screw gate has its benefit and it has its downfall. From there, they ended up doing your D-shaped locker. This though, what we're seeing, this is that aluminum. This is bar stock aluminum, and then we have I-beam aluminum. The I-beam we've talked about, and the bar stock. I wanna just talk about the bar stock. Bar stock is great if we're gonna run a lot of ropes through it, if you're gonna use aluminum, because as the aluminum wears, it actually is going to not create a sharp point on the edge that the rope is going to want to get cut on. So the bar stock actually will wear very evenly and create a good longevity of the beaner if you don't wanna use the heavy stainless instead. Once again, stainless will outlast the bar stock of any kind of aluminum. From there, they started doing the pairs. The pear shapes are these nice, large carabiners with a wider opening here, wider opening here. Once again, it's a screw gate. This one's kind of nifty and I should point it out. On this screw gate, they have red painted on there. It's like a safety. So you know when the red is covered, it is locked. But always, always, always grab your carabiner and double check it, make sure it cannot open. So with the pear though, the beauty of it, 
is this carabiner is great for belaying, it's great for emergency use. I have now a carabiner that's big enough to tie specific knots for doing some rescue, escaping my belay, and different things that I might need a larger carabiner for. So the pear shape was designed so I could tie off and do a few different applications that was difficult with that D or that oval. This carabiner works really well as a belay carabiner, so if you ever get in those emergency situations, this carabiner can also be used in different scenarios. From the pear shape, the next thing we really saw in the market is going to be your auto-locking carabiners. Everything we've talked about so far has been a twist lock system. The auto lockers come in basically two different types, and I have both I'll demonstrate. We've got something called a tri-lock or a triple lock system. That means that to open the carabiner, the gate has to be lifted directly up. I still cannot open the carabiner after lifting it directly up. Stage one is complete. I twist it. Now that is stage two of the safety feature. And then stage three is now I can open that carabiner. When I let go, it actually goes all the way back to that auto locked position. It is completely locked. So a three stage just means that you lift up, twist, open, release, and it's locked. The reason they did this is to cut down on that human error idea. We didn't want to forget to twist it. Sometimes climbers were forgetting to twist their carabiners and they weren't in the habit of always double checking. So the companies decided if we make it automatically locking, it will help with that human error. The downfall to that auto lock though, is it's kind of hard to do with one hand. It takes a lot of practice. Most people have to use two hands, one to hold the carabiner itself, the other one to grab the gate, force it, twist it, open it, let go. If you play enough with them though, you can get to the point where you can easily learn to open and close them with one hand, and they're great. So the downfall to an auto locker, it's a little hard to open and close compared to a, just a simple screw gate. That was a three stage. I wanna introduce the two stage auto locker now. Two stage auto locker, very simple. It just goes twist and open, release. Twist, open, release. So stage one is the twist, stage two is the open, releasing it relocks itself. Um, this, the downfall of the two stage is if you did use this against the rock and it rubs, it can twist it quite easily and pop it open. Very simple. So if you were gonna use this on the rock or touching anything, you might wanna think about that three stage. But in a belay scenario on a belay device, this is a great simple idea. Two stages versus three stages. From there, we saw another design come out shortly after with the auto lockers. All of a sudden, in the climbing world, we had this thing called cross-loading that was becoming a problem um, where the belay device could cross over and put pressure directly this way, weakening the entire carabiner, making it about six kilonewtons instead of that 22 kilonewtons, um, making it extremely dangerous. So some climbing companies decided, well, we have an idea. We'll make this carabiner where we have a safety feature. Some of the companies decided to put in a simple gate down at the bottom. And all this gate is doing is it's allowing you to clip into this portion also, keeping the device where it will not rotate and allow that cross-loading. This is just one design of many that are designed for that belay only use. Another one I would like to show you is this guy. We don't have that gate. We don't have a separator in here. This has this little horn. It's a rhino horn, I call it. And that's designed for those auto, those semi-auto devices like a Grigri or an other rope capturing device. So they cannot pivot past this chunk of metal. There's multiple beaners out there on the market that are wide in one section, almost pregnant, that keep it from sliding over. This is just one example of a carabiner designed mainly for use in the belay situation. Then we have the newest innovation. Just like what we saw before, we have that stainless steel plate here. So when we're using it for a belay device or in a top rope situation, we have an aluminum carabiner with a stainless steel plate, giving this carabiner a lot longer life and a lighter feel. But something I wanted to show you guys and talk to you in a little more detail is every rock climbing carabiner on the spine here is going to have some letters and numbers written down. The letters are K, in, then a number. KN stands for kilonewtons, which is a force. One KN would be 225 pounds 
in a static position. That means I could hang a weight of 225 pounds on this carabiner that would create one kilonewton. As I go above that and fall onto the carabiner, I'm increasing that force significantly. When looking at a carabiner, there's an arrow pointing up and down on the spine. That's gonna be your highest kilonewton rating, your highest force rating. That number is meaning when the carabiner is loaded correct, straight down vertically, that is the strongest it can be. The next number you're gonna see, it's gonna have an arrow pointing this way and that way, showing a load pulling across, that cross-loading we talked. Cross-loading is gonna significantly drop the kilonewtons. Then the last design you're gonna see on that spine with a number, it's going to show the gate open. This is the weakest position a carabiner can be in, and that is going to give us the lowest kilonewtons. Just because we started with an old school technology and we moved into the modern, the old is still good. It still has its applications. So when buying a carabiner, it's not about the newest or the oldest. It's about choosing the right carabiner for the job. Always grab a carabiner, fit it in your hand, see how it feels, check that the lock mechanism is something that you like and if you're looking for a non-locker fill that gate make sure it feels good in your hand choose the size appropriate for the job and choose a climbing carabiner that fits you always check your kilonewtons for the job thank you